Today I would like to talk about the second game which I played in the last Bundesliga weekend. In that match our team played against the team um, of Münchener Schachklub 1836. So it's the second uh, team from Munich. Also very very strong team. And um, yeah, we again lost without winning any individual games. Um, and I played on board one against Gawain Jones. Gawain Jones is a member of the English national team, rating always somewhere between 2650 and 2700. And uh, I remember meeting him already when we were both pretty young for the first time. And uh, he struck me already then as somebody who's extremely strong in tactics and who can trap you at any potential uh, point of the game. Um, so I wanted again to keep things as simple as possible, but we will see how, um, how that plan panned out. Um, I opened the game with a move knight to f3 and he went for knight f6 and now I went for a move order with g3. Um, yeah, I had some ideas why I wanted to play g3 and not c4 here, but I will not go into too much detail on this. Um, he answered in the standard way, uh, trying to go for a king's Indian, which is his, uh, his pet line. And um, now after castled, he surprised me with a move c5. Um, so I think normally he played the move castled in this position. And uh, actually, now I, I started to think how I can potentially reach a position again that I was uh, actually prepared for. And for that purpose, I played the move b3, which is not the normal move which I uh, play here. Um, but nonetheless, I played uh, b3. And after um, b3, he basically has the option of going d5, grabbing uh, some space in the center. But I played these kind of positions um, quite a few times, basically with colors reversed. Um, and now white can, for instance, go for a setup with e3, maybe later c4, d4. And white is very flexible. And I, I like this kind of position with the two uh, fianchettoed bishops. And uh, yeah, objectively, it's probably equal. But uh, yeah, I like to play this with white. So I was not really uh, deterred by that, uh, by that option. And um, indeed, he didn't go for that. But instead, he went for the move d6, which now um, hints at the option of going, um, going e5 next. And of course, I can I can go for something like this. So I could go for bishop b2, and then he goes e5. But now I can't play d4 anymore. Yeah? So I can still play with c4, and I think the position is um, also quite uh, interesting and close to equal. In any case, I decided okay, I don't want to give him the entire center at this point, and went for the immediate d4, transposing back to a preparation which I um, had in a different uh, move order. After takes takes. He now went for d5, uh, and uh, after some developing moves, um, we now are back to um, one particular sideline of the King's Indian um, after the move c4. So basically, this um, kind of um, position can arise in the King's Indian with g3. And I always wanted to play this with white. I never really had the chance to, to get a game in this line. Um, but I, I think it's actually quite quite an interesting line. He went for d takes c, and now white has two options, knight a3 and sacrificing a pawn, or a little bit more solid, go for b takes c4. And that's what I did. And uh, I actually had prepared quite a bit against the move uh, queen to b6, which, according to my notes, was the main line, and uh, which he also played, I think, two or three times. And so I had some... Um, yeah, some preparation against queen b6. But at this point, he completely surprised me with a move a knight to uh, c6. And uh, actually, it's a little bit embarrassing that I was surprised because he has a book in which he describes exactly that, this move and exactly that line. And that's what my teammates, um, who are most of them better in theory than I am, uh, told me after, uh, after the game. So after knight c6, I was already kind of uh, out of book. Um, I knew that you're supposed to take, um, but that was it. So I had to start uh, calculating here. And uh, yeah, there are different options. One is to go for queen takes d8. And there are a few recent games also between uh, very high level players um, in that line. So for instance, takes, takes, um, bishop c6, rook b8, bishop e5. And now black can go for things like rook b6 or rook b4. And uh, yeah, we are still in... Um, in kind of well-known um, theoretical territory. Instead, um, I thought to myself, okay, why don't I just go queen a4 and take the pawn on c6 afterwards? 
So after all, it seems to be a pawn sacrifice. So that's what I did. Played queen e4, queen a4, and after bishop d7, I now very quickly uh, took this pawn on c6. And um, at this point, I realized, oh no, I blundered horribly. So after bishop takes c6, maybe you can pause the video and you can try to find the winning move for black. Yeah, I hope you found it. The winning move for black uh, is simply uh, the move queen to b6 with a double attack on the two bishops. And um, yeah, after that move, I would have been very close to, to resigning already. Um, if I take on d7, he will just take on b2. And after knight a3, he takes on d7. I can't take back because my knight is hanging. And after rook b1, queen takes. Yeah, now I have to take uh, the knight and in the end he's just a full piece up for absolutely nothing. So after queen b6, the only other option I would have is to go um, bishop b5, but here he can just insist on the same line with a6. Yeah, and now if I take on uh, on d7, um, we're back to the same, same, same as before. Um, yeah, maybe not that if instead of knight a3 I go for something like bishop c6. In the end, I'm just uh, also just a piece down for absolutely nothing. So while I was um, already feeling like um, yeah, like I did something really really stupid with the move for bishop takes c6, um, my opponent actually didn't think for that long and played the move bishop takes c6. And after the game, he told me he, he trusted me and he thought that I was still in um, in my preparation somehow. And he just saw that after bishop takes c6, he will get excellent compensation and just wanted to go for that position. So it's an absolutely crazy case of mutual um, chess blindness. And this is something which has not happened to me for the last, I think, more than 20 years. And which is extremely unusual, of course, at, um, at a similar level. So, um, yeah. In any case, let's move on and let's uh, see what happened in the game. So he took on c6 and I was extremely relieved after queen takes c6. I, I told to myself, uh, yeah, maybe I missed something after queen b6 and he saw more, but in the end it turns out it's just, it's just game over after queen b6. Okay, so what did he see? Instead, he's, he saw that he will play uh, rook c8 and now after rook c5, he will get a very, very strong counterplay. This is actually something which I missed as well, especially this move, uh, rook to c5. Um, what are black's plans? Well, black has a few ideas. The main ideas are to, at some point, attack the white king. So, for instance, one way would be to go for for such, um, for such a setup. And so I have to now very um, precisely calculate already um, what happens. Um, for that reason, I spent some time here and then I went for the move um, rook to d1, queen c8, and now knight to d2. Very important that I get my knight to the square f1 and not f3. Um, and yeah, let's see why, if we just show one sample line, let's say um, queen h3. Well, now I can just take here. Now, this is always the point. If I'm in time to take on f6 and get um, this move in, then for instance, after rook h5, I can always go knight f1 and he doesn't really have any uh, attack left yeah, because he has no pieces left that he could bring into the attack. Yeah, so note that it's better to go to um, f1 than to f3 to avoid this uh, g5, g4 shenanigans. Uh, so for that reason, I went uh, knight e2 with this idea. And he went for the move queen to e6. Um, very interesting move. Again, not a move that I was expecting really. Um, he goes for the e2 pawn, but at the same time he sacrifices a second pawn on a7. Um, and I really kind of took this pawn on a7 because I felt like I have to. Uh, first of all, I thought it's good, but I also felt a little bit like I have to because after something like e3, he also starts um, attacking me here with knight g4, let's say takes, takes, um, and again, um, these kind of motives are, are on the radar. Maybe or even knight takes h2 at some point, so there are a lot of, a lot of different motives here for black, and I was kind of afraid to go for, 
to go for that. Also f2 is loose, so sometimes you can go queen f5, just attack f2. And um, yeah. So that's why I took on a7, attacking the rook. And he just uh, played rook fc8, defending the rook. And now I'm two pawns up. Um, but my king without this bishop on g2 feels a little bit uh, a little bit weak. Objectively, I still thought I should uh, be at least fine here, maybe even better. Um, but it's definitely not so easy. So there are different ways of now giving uh, the pawn back. One is e4, that could have been an interesting move. But I decided um, to simplify things a little bit because uh, yeah, I was not willing to go for the most complicated lines. Instead, I went for a knight to f1, um, just giving up the uh, e2 pawn. But the point is, if he takes e2, for instance, here, um, then always he has to protect e7 later. And um, then I also have my uh, weaknesses kind of well protected. Huh? So I, I think this would have been too early. So instead, he went for the aforementioned move knight to g4. But now, at least with this knight on f1, I control the h2 square. So knight takes h2 options are uh, not feasible anymore. Takes, takes. And um, yeah, here I uh, went for the move queen to d7. Again, he threatens queen takes e2 and rook h5. So I really wanted to try to trade down some material because in the end, I'm still um, two pawns up. I guess basically only move here is not to go for queen takes h2, keeping the defense on g4. But now I finally managed to at least get my, my rooks out, get my rooks more active with uh, rook d2 and uh, now even uh, rook to e1. Note that I could also take on e7 here, but this seemed uh, very, very risky to me because I thought he would go for um, knight e5, maybe go for this later with a c file, or maybe even for something like, I don't know, queen a8 and knight f3. And uh, I didn't want uh, that to happen at all. So for that reason, I went uh, rook e1, which I think is also a fairly uh, logical developing move. Of course, now the main idea is that he can't go um, knight e5 because I can just take, and now this rook is, um, is hanging. He kicked my queen away, and I went for a check, and now for the queen straight. And actually now after takes takes, um, which is kind of forced again, um, he took on, on c4, and we reach uh, an end game. So I basically gave the two pawns that he had sacrificed back, and now we have a fairly equal endgame position. Um, but I started to be um, more ambitious, and this was uh, yeah, this backfired. I should have just gone for the move knight to e3, um, when either he can trade immediately on e3, but that's um, yeah, that's not really a problem because I can just take back and it's a draw, or he can go for something like e4. But even here, I can just uh, basically force him to take on e3. And after, let's say, knight takes, rook takes, um, f5, f3, um, yeah, we are very, very close to um, to signing a draw. So um, that would have been definitely the easiest way of, uh, of drawing the game at this point. But after rook c4, I suddenly uh, thought, well, after f3, I, I'm, I just win a pawn. Because if the knight goes back somewhere, I can just take on e5. And uh, I thought maybe I have some winning chances, so why not to go for f3? Um, but of course, he's not forced to go back, but instead can go for this move e4, sacrificing the pawn. And now after takes, takes, takes. Yes, I'm a pawn up in this endgame, but interestingly, it turns out that the only person who can uh, realistically play for a win here is, um, is black. So that's, um, yeah, that was also kind of unexpected for me. So I thought either it's an easy draw, or maybe I can even push. Um, but no, his pieces are just uh, way too active. Knight e5 and uh, king f6. So if I give more checks here, uh, this would not really change anything. So I can't even go for a perpetual because it could just go to e6, uh, which would not really change the position that much. Um, so at this point, I definitely had a few options, maybe even go king f2 instead of king g2 to try and protect the e4 pawn, and then at some point just give up the a2 pawn and then uh, try to make the draw with three against three. But I decided to go queen uh, king to g2 and um, to concede the e4 pawn instead. And now after rook c4, he can just take on e4. 
and we land um, in this endgame. And still, I, I was not really worried at all. Um, it was not yet the first time control, so I had to play a little bit more quickly. Um, and I went for uh, knight uh, moves to the to the other wing to try and bind uh, this rook. So uh, white's goal in this position in general is to get one rook behind the pawn and then to try and push the pawn. And black's goal is to at some point just win the pawn and then to try to win this three versus two with the knights on the board. Okay, knight b3. And now he played really quite quite well. So here you really see this uh, strength of these of these top players. Um, immediately seizing the opportunity of going g5, um, preventing a possible h4, which would make my uh, task um, easier. Probably I should have gone uh, h4 um, before, so that would probably have been an, an easier way to withdraw. Um, yeah, but instead, we now I'll play a couple of moves back and forth, and he slowly improves his position. And for me, it's not really that easy what I'm supposed to do. Um, I mean, I can go h4, but first of all, you can just take. Um, and even like these lines with g4, it's never completely easy to assess that. So instead, we went uh, back and forth a few more moves. And now after rook c4, um, we reached move 40. And um, I know in uh, move 41 had um, an interesting decision. Namely, I could have played the move uh, knight to d7 which probably objectively is what I should have done here. Um, but then you can exchange and win this pawn on uh, a2. Now I will go h3, put my rook on the fourth rank. And objectively, this should be a draw, but especially with the king cut off, um, I was not really uh, mentally ready to, to concede uh, that. Um, at, at this point. So I was instead trying to, to make an easier draw and I had the feeling with this a-pawn I can't really be worse. But it turns out uh, it's actually quite easy um, for white to get into a serious trouble here, as we will see in the game. Rook c3, again uh, preventing a possible a4 push. And now he went for h5. Yes, still after a4, uh, he always has rook a3, so that's not really working. I tried to exchange a pair of rooks. Of course, he uh, does not want that and now went for knight to b5, finally having some active plan, but um, I think it's a little bit off to bring the, the knight to the other wing where basically most of the action is going on, on on the king side. My plan with knight b5 was to go a4, rook a2, a5, a6, a7, a8, queen. But as you can see, it takes quite a few moves to actually reach that. And uh, black managed to, to get uh, a lot of um, counterplay in the meanwhile. He went for h4. Yeah, and at this point, it gets really computerish if you want to uh, talk about the objective evaluation. So computer says I should take on h4 and I don't really get all the subtleties. Um, but I went for a4 instead. And now the computer suggests um, a very strong move uh, for black. Maybe this was his best winning chance after missing the queen b6 in the opening, namely to go for uh, knight to g4, a move which I didn't really uh, take that seriously during the game. And now after rook a2, now to go for the move f5. And because basically knight g4 won a tempo on the rook, and now in some lines uh, when the pawn is on f3 with his knight on g4, uh, my king uh, might get um, in, in trouble. So let's uh, consider one sample line, takes, takes, a5, f4, and now f3. Yeah, and here maybe I could go for something like king e1, but let's just say I, um, I just go for the most obvious defense, rook a1, and now um, rook d2, a6, and uh, yeah, here he can win in a very nice uh, fashion. Going for this move, rook e2. And then finally bring his knight to uh, give a checkmate. But of course, in this position to, to see, to anticipate all of this is uh, not easy for a human. Um, and um, yeah, I think um, what he did at the time also seemed pretty logical to me, just going for king to, um, king to h5. 
with the idea of maybe going for king uh, to g4. But on the other hand, uh, at least now I um, play uh, rook to a2. And in similar lines, he would now have the knight on e5 and would not have this mate threat, which would give me one um, one tempo, which actually would uh, be enough to, to uh, get a draw. Um, if he takes on g3, I was also quite confident that such a position should be okay. Uh, because this pawn is very far advanced and now this king is uh, doesn't really have any pawns um, in the vicinity so I felt that at some point I will give rook a4 check and then he's not going to mate the king and and I will be quick enough to get uh, to get a draw so instead he came up with a very tricky move the move knight to c4 essentially um, threatening to go for something like this next um, and now forcing me to go for a very uh, concrete line, which I did with uh, g takes h. And now a5 is coming next. And he actually goes for g4, keeping his uh, pawn structure intact for the moment. a5, and now just rook d5. Yeah, winning uh, the pawn. If I go a6, the point is that he will at least get, um, get such an end game, where again, he can press uh, forever. So instead, um, I actually calculated decently well here. And I saw that uh, after rook d5, his idea uh, after knight c3 is not to take because then basically I can just force a draw like this and at some point give this knight for the um, pawn on f6. So instead he went for this move rook to f5. Very, very tricky um, with the idea of going knight e3 next and then uh, it would be made uh, in the next move. Computer actually gives a very, very funny move here. Uh, knight e2, a move which I didn't see at all with the idea after knight e3 to go king h1 and to meet a potential rook f1 with knight g1. Um, yeah, but instead I went for another move which uh, secures the draw and which I think is a very human move to play here, namely the move king to g1. Um, and my idea was to parry knight e3 with uh, rook a1, and now I, I'm quite quick here. So after king g1, he's basically forced to take on a5, but now I managed to get knight e4 in, threaten um, knight g3 check, and now we exchange uh, one more pair of pawns, and he still tried to uh, try to play on with a move knight to c4. And of course, I could always take on g4 and it's a theoretical draw and I would be fairly confident that I would hold it, um, but uh, it was not really necessary. So after some calculation, I decided, no, it's it's not really necessary. So I will go for an id4 instead. Um, and now uh, just set up a position with a knight on f2 and the rook on e2. And against this setup, it's very hard for him to progress in any way. So. Um, he tried knight g6 to potentially give a check on f4, uh, but now I just went back, uh, suggesting to repeat moves. He tried the last um, idea with rook f8, maybe trying to bring the rook uh, over to a1 or something. Um, but now I have a very forcing way of dealing with that, namely the move uh, rook f2, threatening rook f6 with a potential rook h6 mate. So he now obliged and just uh, traded down. And at this point, uh, he offered a draw, which of course uh, I accepted as um, yeah, this position is just a complete and easy uh, draw. Well, what to say? Um, I got extremely lucky in the opening. I mean, it was really, really stupid to take on c6 and I got extremely lucky that they didn't punish that. Um, that's normally not what you will get even from a player of, um, of 22, 2300. These people would have normally easily seen that, but I think he just trusted in my in my preparation and just uh, went for the first line that seemed reasonable to him. Um, and yeah, afterwards, I think I played the middle game quite well. Um, and he did so too. He played in a very entertaining and aggressive fashion and I managed to neutralize this by giving up the two pawns. And then with this f3, I lost my sense of danger. So I thought I was still pushing for a win and I completely lost my sense of danger. Uh, I saw that knight e3 is very likely uh, a draw, 
but I uh, didn't want to go for that because I had the feeling, okay, I can also make a draw from the position of uh, of strength and then um, really had to suffer. And maybe after this knight g4, the position would even have been, um, would even have been lost. So in that sense, um, yeah, I'm very, very happy with the result. I'm obviously um, overall not, not entirely happy with my play, especially with this blunder, um, bishop to c6. But okay, what can you do? You take half a point and uh, you hope not to blunder something like this again. Um, in one of the next games. Well, uh, that's it from, from me and uh, thanks a lot for watching.